Hi, I'm Phil Lowe at the Furniture Institute of Massachusetts, and this is The Art of Woodworking. Okay, so um, if there's any of you folks out there that would like to try carving, you know, you have to sort of, you know, crawl before you can walk and you have to walk before you can run. So um, what I usually suggest to people that are doing beginning carving is they go through a series of exercises in order to learn how to, um, you, know, uh, you know, carve properly. And uh, one of the uh, tricks to carving properly is, first of all, you have to have the right tools. And in this situation, I have a series of, uh, of flutes and, uh, that go across the grain, on the diagonal, and with the grain. And this is a really great exercise for a beginner carver because it really teaches them the control of the tool as well as sharpening the tool and uh, some different stab cuts and uh, being able to read the grain. So um, I'm going to grab a couple of the tools here that I'm going to need for this, which is uh, basically a number eight. I think it's about a 12 or a 10, which means it's a uh, number eight in curvature and it's a 10 millimeter width. And if you'll notice these two tools, if you look really closely at the tips here, or the ends of it, one of them is sharpened straight across and the other one is sharpened with a curve. And I'll go into why we do that a little later, but what I want to do first of all is show you a couple of simple techniques of how to sharpen the tool. Because if you don't have a sharp tool, it's almost impossible to do nice work and it really has a tendency to tear the grain and leave the surface quite rough as opposed to having a nice smooth cut. So there is a few different types of uh, 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 materials or uh, stones that we need in order to sharpen. So basically sharpening is, is you know, if, you t if I took a piece of steel and I went out down to, the, down to the beach and I went to a rock and I started rubbing the piece of steel on the piece of rock, it would abrade away. And that's basically what we're doing with carving tools. So a couple of the uh, very preliminary tools that you might want to uh, you know, invest in are a, uh, a bench stone, which uh, this happens to be an India stone, which is, has a fine side and also a rough side. And uh, usually if we're trying to uh, shape the tool, we'll work on the, the rough side to begin with, and then we'll go to the fine side afterwards. But uh, when you're sharpening gouges, one of the things that you have to be aware of is that you, um, you don't misshape the, uh, the, the curvature of it. And we also want to have a certain bevel on here. So if I want to carve at a certain angle where I'm starting to pick up a shaving, you know, this is the angle that I need to sharpen at or something that's just slightly below that. And in order to do that, what I do is I'll go to a stone uh, and uh, add a little bit of mineral oil. This is mineral oil because it's uh, non-toxic. You add that to the surface to uh, float away any of the, the metal that comes off of here. And you, you see these black streaks on the surface of the stone. What that is, is those are those black streaks, uh, metal from previous sharpenings. Now, because this is curved, um, you know, I have to be able to take this uh, tool, get it to the height that I, or the angle that I want it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it across from one corner to the other, like so and then back and forth so that I'm taking one even cut across in one direction and one even cut across in the opposite direction. Because if I go back and forth like this, I'm actually wearing the tool much more so in the center than I am along the edges. So you want to be really very deliberate in order to make sure that you hone this all the way across. And basically what I'm doing is I'm wearing away that metal on the underside to a point where you might be able to see a line going right across the end of this. And that's where I've actually worn the metal away. So I'm going to flatten the, uh, the bevel out a little bit. I'm going to bring this up to an angle. 
And what that does is once I, I get uh, to the right angle that I want, a burr should work up on the concave side of the tool. Now I can feel a little burr on the inside. Now the other tools that you're going to, uh, other uh, stones that are going to be necessary to sharpen is I have a uh, fine India slip stone which has about a half inch radius on one end and a quarter of an inch radius on the other. I also have a white Arkansas stone which has about a quarter of an inch radius on one edge and about an eighth inch radius on the other edge. Now, you know, basically what I'm doing here again is I'm going to add a little bit of oil to the, the uh, underside of this. And when I go to sharpen this now, what I need to do is I need to lift the, the slip stone out about 10 degrees or so. So I'm putting a secondary bevel on the inside of this. And what that means is instead of having, you know, a bevel that comes, you know, straight in this direction, it's actually curved in two directions. So there's probably about a 25 to 30 degree angle on the underside and about a 10 degree angle on the top or on the inside, which actually firms up the edge because if it came to a, you know, a really fine edge, it would turn into a piece of tin foil and collapse on you. So by putting that secondary bevel on there, you're able to get a nice firm uh, edge on this. And we want to make sure that we hone this all the way along from corner to the center and back to the opposite corner. And this is going to get rid of the burr that's on the inside of here and put that secondary bevel on the inside. Okay, sometimes we need to go back to the stone again with a couple of light touches to get the burr off of the back. And then we go ahead to the, uh, the white Arkansas stone and do the same thing on the inside here. And now I'm also going to touch this on the white Arkansas on the surface here. Okay. Now for the final touch up here. You know, when you, uh, if you ever go to a traditional barber, he'll take out a uh, strop and sharpen his razor when he goes to uh, give you a shave or uh, shave the back of your neck. So I have a couple of different types of leather here. And a couple of different shapes. Um, you know, this is just a plain piece of leather with a smooth side and a rough side. Usually if you wanted to strop with that, you would use this by pulling the uh, tool backwards. You don't want to push it into the, uh, the, the uh, cutting edge because it'll cut the leather. And if needed, you can fold this up into a curve to do the inside. If you want to bring it a step further, you can use uh, a material like this, which is called Yellowstone, which is uh, an abrasive that gets put onto a strop by, this is an old uh, hacksaw blade that I'll just run along the surface or of the uh, material to take some uh, fine powder off of it. And all this blackness that you see on the surface here is actually me metal that's come off of the tools. And if you rub that into the surface and then draw this out, if you look at the, you know, the texture on the back of this, you see it's a little sort of uh, frosty like. So as I Strop this now a few times using this abrasive. What you'll notice is that has really come up to a quite a shine on the surface here. And what sharpening is really all about is removing scratches from the surface. So the finer the scratches, the sharper the tool. 
Now I can do that as well. Basically I made up a conical shaped uh, strop so that you know it's wider at one end so if I'm trying to uh, sharpen a, a, or strop a wider chisel I can you know use it up a little higher on the curve as opposed to one that's a little tighter that I can use down a little bit lower on the curve. So I can you know use, use this for a variety of different sweeps of the different chisels. Uh, that uh, I can usually tell by the touch and that's ready to go. Okay, let's uh, let's think about doing a few uh, cuts on on this board now. Uh, usually, what I usually suggest is when you're you know going to make any cuts, what you do is you start off going across the grain because if you carve across the grain, there's no grain direction that you have to worry about. Basically, what you're doing is you're um, you know, a piece of wood is like a box of straws, and if I'm carving across the grain, basically these vessels, which are the the uh, you know in the the uh, in the uh, the board, which are like these straws, if I go directly across this way, there's no grain direction involved. So my first uh, initial thought would be to uh, get a, get some um, get a, uh, a pencil here. I'm going to come in about a half inch, and I'm going to make a couple of a line going across here and then I'm going to step off about three eighths of an inch with a three eighths space three eighths of an inch with a three eighths space so we'll do a couple of uh, a couple of two three flutes here so this will be one we'll get rid of this this will be a flat spot in the middle then we'll have another one going across like this which will be there now, when we go to carve, sometimes uh, unless you have a curved end on a flute, um, a flute is actually a concave cut uh, that is consistent in depth and consistent in width, and usually will have a round end on one uh, or a round end on two, a round end on both ends, or you can have a stop cut like you have, like you see here. The stop cut is actually this little half round that is. Uh, you know, uh, stabbed into the uh, the surface of the board, so that it it uh, will give you a place to uh, end the cut. But in this situation, we're going all the way across. Now, in order to hold the tool correctly, um, uh, you, there's a couple of ways that you hold the tool. You can have a stab cut like this, where you're going to actually you know uh, plunge the you know the tool into the surface of the wood. You can have an underhand cut where you're actually holding your forward hand upright with the palm up or you can have an overhand cut which you're actually grabbing the tool with your hand on the opposite side and then uh, when you start this what you want to do is you want, don't want to take the initial cut all the way across you'll start by making one cut and as you see the shaving come off what you're hoping to do is have a consistent shaving in thickness and width as you go across now you notice that shaving changed in in width as I went across so what happens there is my my cut was sort of undulating so again uh, this time I'm going to try to do it a little a little bit better now what I'm thinking about is if I have my my wrist nailed to the bench top you know that's the best way to hold this so my whole forearm is on the surface of the board and all the propulsion is coming from my shoulder up here or you know I'm tucking my arm in and I'm not necessarily using my arms to push but I'm using my whole body to just sort of push the, uh, the, the shaving along like so so you get that nice little curl coming off of there now I'll go ahead and make a second cut coming down trying to go right in between the two lines all the way across steering this right along the pencil line and we'll do a second cut here now that secondary bevel on the inside helps to make the shaving turn like this because it acts sort of like a chip breaker on a plane 
So we'll just bring this across. Now, if I start to dive in or catch an edge, you're going to notice that I'm going to have a little ragged spot on the edge on the sh on the edge of the the flute. So now these should just fall off of here, and you'll notice that those are pretty straight. This is if you can look really closely here. What had happened here when I was making my cut, I let my tool drift a little bit in the corner, dug in, so it lifted those fibers. So, you know, when choosing the tool that you're trying to work with, you also want the tool to be a little bit bigger than the width of the, of the flute, because if you buried the, uh, the uh, corners right to the, uh, the, to the surface, that, uh, you know, that defect would, would uh, occur much more often. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on, focus on each side just to try to clean this up to my pencil line. So what I've done is I've tilted my blade slightly and rolled it up ever so slightly in this direction. Can you see that? And I'm going to push that along like so. And then come back the opposite direction on the other side. bringing this across like so. You also notice that I haven't gone all the way across to the very end because I want to come back in the opposite direction so that I don't chip out the end when I make my last cut. Now what you're looking for is as smooth a surface as possible on the inside and you want the width to be exactly you know to the pencil line so that you have some nice straight cuts. You got to remember though, we're all human and we're all going to make slight mistakes when we're doing this sort of thing. So that's what really leaves the texture on the surface that shows that it's actually hand done. So, okay, now I'm going to turn this around and come in the other direction just to finish off, you know, this last little bit. So I'm just going to come across here. Now the trick here is to get this cut exactly in the line with the other one. So those, you know, those two cuts have to meet perfectly, not only in this direction, but also in this direction. So if you come in with the tool and you have it tilted, you know, you, 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 your cut isn't going to meet up correctly. So that's one of the real difficulties in carving, especially when you're trying to have these two cuts come together. So we'll go right across here. And that looks pretty good. One down the middle. And then a second one to the width of the two lines. Okay. So the next cut that I'm going to have us do is these diagonal cuts going across. Now this is going to add a lot more uh, complexity to, uh, you know, to what we're doing here. Because if we start off with a, a line going across like this on the 45, and let's make a make this three ace and a three ace space and another three ace. Okay, this is where some difficulties come in because um, when I make this cut, um, I'm actually cutting, if I think about these box of straws and if this angle is the angle of the lines. Now what you'll find is that if I try to carve against this side of uh, the line, the left hand side of the line with my carving tool, it's going to catch these fibers and lift up which is going to leave a rougher cut. If, I, if I'm carving the opposite side this way here, let me see if I can turn this so you can see it. So if I'm carving in this direction on the right hand side, it's ca carving with the grain. So you'll notice that it's laying the grain down nicely so you get a nice smooth cut. So in order to uh, alleviate any problems, the first thing that we would like to do is usually send some sort of a cut right down the middle uh, with, a, with a narrower tool. And this is where the Vayner tool comes in handy, which is the number 11. So I'm going to grab one of those right here. And 
if uh, we grab something about this size. Now again, what, I, what you uh, remember, the vayner is the U-shaped tool. And if I get this started and run this down the center, what it's going to do is it's going to relieve the center for me so that I can then carve from one side and then the other side. Now look at those. That's kind of a great shaving coming off of there. Try to steer this a little bit. Sometimes because I'm hitting the grain, it has a tendency you want to pull the tool in, into the grain. So you want to be careful and make sure you try to make as straight a cut as possible. Now, it's much more obvious. I don't know if you can see this or not. Um, if we can get a close-up, you might be able to see some of this raggedness right along this side. And it's because the tool on the left-hand side was cutting against the fibers. Again, what was happening there is, you know, these are, these are like this. It's catching those fibers and it's lifting them up and it's leaving that rough side. So what we want to do in this situation now is I'll just use my number eight again and I'm just going to carve to the right hand side along the pencil line this time. So I'm going to follow that pencil line and just cut the right hand side. And we'll do this one. Sometimes if you roll your tool up a little bit and angle it ever so slightly, you're going to be able to make a better cut. I know those are no nice looking shavings, but you've got to be able to see what you're doing as well. So you want to clear those every once in a while. Now, in order to do the opposite side, I want to turn the board completely around which turns those vessels or those vessels uh, into right hand vessels and I'm able to cut I'm going to just save those look at those those are kind of great aren't they so I'm going to come back in the opposite direction now and cut along this side but I'm only going to the depth of the center so I'm riding my bevel on the center and I'm just cutting, you know, this right hand side again. Do this one as well. Now, it's all about control of the tool. Now, you notice that I'm trying to hold that tool as firmly as possible, trying not to go up and down this way. You know, if you lock your arms in, get that elbow or that forearm right on your work as you're working, sliding it along. Basically, you're holding this tool at this angle, and uh, because it's locked in against your body, you're not really moving it up and down, which allows you to make you know, a nice straight cut. And we'll finish off these ends over here. So again, we got a, the right hand side. Right to, um, towards the end here. Give you a little another opportunity to come back and try to straighten these lines out. Now you notice that I, I'm carving with some some light coming in from a different direction. If I turned off this light over here, and you just noticed the uh, the light from above, you don't get as much shadow created, so it makes it a lot more difficult to see what you're doing. So it's really nice to have some sort of a light coming from the side or from uh, a right-hand side, left-hand side, or, or directly in front of you. Um, okay, I won't play around with this too much, but you, I think you get the idea. 
as to how you have to read the grain on the diagonal there. That's what really uh, makes this a, a little more difficult. Now, let's go ahead and uh, lay out a few of these uh, flutes now that uh, we'll start off with a half inch along the edge here. So I'm going to run these along this way with a three ace. with here and another three ace now if uh, if you decide to to do some exercises like this I would encourage you to do all of the flutes as you notice how I have them here you know I've run them in different directions but uh, just to move things along a little quicker, I'm going to only do a couple of them. Now, the other thing that we need to do is have an ending spot, which is, uh, you know, right out the, uh, the end here. And we also have to have, you know, where we need to begin. Now, when we go to uh, cut these, this is a, this is a little different uh, now. Um, in order to in order to uh, have this rounded cut on the end, if I happen to use a square, a square edge tool like this one, you see here, if I go to plunge that into the surface now, what's going to happen is these two corners, these two corners here, are actually going to go as deep as it does in the center. And what we're really looking for is a, a curve cut that is shallower, out towards the pencil lines or come to nothing at the pencil lines and goes to the depth of the cut in the middle. And that's why you'll notice that I'm going to go ahead and grab this other tool that I've already gone and, and changed the shape of it. So if I look at these both in this direction here, you'll notice that this one is straight across and this one has the curve. And that curve is going to, going to be the amount that I actually stab it into the surface. Okay, so depending on where we want it to, to end, um, we'll make these end at this end here. I'm going to, now again, this is a stab cut like so, and I'm going to grab it with my thumb and my, uh, my index finger, and it's going to be spun around so that the the concave section is away from me. So it's leaving that nice half round. And I'm going to plunge that in until I hit the two pencil lines. Now I have to be careful this way not to tilt it in one direction or the other because otherwise it's not going to go in the proper amount in the center. So we're looking to have that go right in. So that's even all the way across. Now, we can abandon this tool if we wanted to and use, uh, you know, the straight uh, number eight this, uh, at this point. Or if you only have one tool and you've uh, went and ground this, why don't we use this one? I'll show you how to, uh, how to handle this. Now, one of the things we have to look at is the grain direction. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the edge of the board. And I can see these annual ring marks running up this way in this direction here. And if I think about those being my, um, my surface of my straws in this direction, if I carve this way, I'm going to be going with the grain. If I come back in, the, in this direction, I'm going to be against the grain and I'm going to lift up the, uh, the vessels and it's going to tear out. So my cuts need to be from left to right. If you happen to uh, come across a situation where they're the opposite, what you'll have to do is to make a cut coming along and stop and then come back in from this direction and then come back in from the opposite direction. But in this situation, we're actually, uh, you know, in pretty good shape. So I'm going to start off, you know, a little bit away from the line, about a sixteenth or so, and just make that initial cut so I can get a sense of how, how it's cutting right down the middle. 
And then when I hit, hit this uh, half, this curve, what's, what I have to do is I have to rock the tool in both directions so that the shaving just falls away. Because if I come up to that and I flick it and it's attached to the end of this, it's going to chip that out. So you want to, so there's no flicking going on here. All right, I noticed that this is a little rough on the right hand side, so I'm going to come back in the opposite direction. And on the end, I want to try and get a nice half round going all the way across here. Now I chipped that out a little bit. So that's a hard one to correct. And again, we're trying to make these cuts all come together in one spot. Undulation in the grain there. All right, let's try this next one here. Now, if you decide to get going on carving, you know, these, this is really the, the best exercise to start with because it teaches you tool control, it teaches you how deep to cut, it also teaches you grain direction, and these are all very important things that you need to know when you're carving. And uh, if you, you know, go ahead and try to start carving, you know, the thing that you need to practice is to practice over and over again because it just doesn't come overnight, and I encourage you to do that. So I'm Phil Lowe at the Furniture Institute of Massachusetts, and this is The Art of Woodworking.